It seems like I got nothing to do. Hit up some stand the radio. I'm listening to one of the top podcasts, and they bringing you the real. And when they talk sports, it feels like you on the field. From real talk to real sports, from Madden to 2K, just listen for one day. They'll grab you when you say it's on the net, man. Turn off your stereo, not music. I mess with them stand the radio. What up, guys? What up, guys? And first and foremost, man, I apologize. I don't know if you guys are being affected on your end, but for some reason, this intro has been acting funny, man, for the last few weeks. I think what I may have to do, you know, we may have to delete it, re-upload it, see what happens from there. So I apologize for that, guys, if there was a long pause as you were waiting. But we're here, man. Sim Standard Radio, episode 66. And as you can imagine, we are. (laughs) <laughs> overjoyed with excitement right now. There's a, a whole lot on the way. You know, as you guys know, some of us actually have Madden 16 in hand. Others will be receiving it very shortly. And EA Access next Thursday, man. So the next time we come to you after the night, guys, will have an opportunity. Those Xbox One owners will be able to play the game. So and also NBA Live, man. So it's a lot to talk about, as you guys can imagine. But before we dive in, of course, we're going to go around the room, see how everybody is doing. And um, shout out to John Turkey for the nice intro. We always want to throw that in. So let's go ahead and get it moving, man. Smitty, man, how you been doing, man? What's going on out there? Oh, not much, man. I'm uh, just excited about, like, like you said, everything came out. You know what I mean? All this, all this stuff just dropped. Just the, the drop happened, and, you know, like I tweeted earlier to to AZ, you know, operation shutdown September 15th. You know what I'm saying? Plain and simple. So it's, yeah, it's looking pretty critical out here, man. It, you know, loving the competition. And uh, also we got, uh, I know, you know, not also on top of all the gaming news, we got preseason football tonight. And even this whole weekend, we got like a good, what, like five, six, seven games this weekend at least. So, you know, it's everything's a, a, a lot of things are falling into place right now. This is great timing. Great timing. Absolutely, man. And AZ, man, how you doing out there, man? How was your week? Man, it's been great, man. I'm hyped, man. The ball period is ending. I'm getting our, our, our eyes on basketball games we're getting our hands on the football game like smitty said it's football time uh, about to turn up my wedding anniversary is tomorrow so you have to excuse me if you hear background noise at the point during this show because i got two of my boys i got both my boys with me tonight as my wife is at the salon you know what i mean getting whipped up so we um <laughs> i'm just i'm excited man I'm, I, this is my time of year I can't wait till college football kicks off and um, Titans are in action tomorrow. We get our first look at Mariota in-game action. I'm hyped, man. So, you know, like Smitty said as well, uh, live dropped a bomb on 2K today. And I, I want to – we're going to talk about this. I know this wasn't on the topic list, but I think that there was some thievery going on between 2K and uh, EA because we're going to expand on it. I'm – give it back to them in a second, but it seems to me as if 2K heard about live Pro-Am and just slapped Pro-Am on their name as opposed to it being an actual Pro-Am. Because if you know about basketball and the Pro-Am and the summer circuits and how they play in the summertime, Pro-Am means pros and amateurs playing together. So with the mode that Live has, which is intentional Pro-Am, as opposed to what 2K has, which is, you know, you're playing with your friends, and then if five people are not able to get in there, then you have NBA players. But it's not intentional. It's not at uh, the regular parks. Like, Live has authentic parks. But we're going to get into that. But that's a little shadiness. I don't know if people caught it or not. We're going to talk about that, too. But back to Sim. Man, I'm hyped, though. Let's go. Competition. Yeah, man. And, you know, we we definitely going to let Azua take the lead with that when we get to that topic. And let me go ahead and run through the topics. Um, some of you guys may or may not know, uh, if you haven't seen Azua's video, recent video in regards to 
you know, live in 2K and the competition, definitely go check him out. You know, at his, you know, Azure Fact, you guys know that by now. Check out the video. But he had an opportunity to go down to EA, you know, a little earlier in the year, and he had got his hands on those modes, you know. So you got myself, who's actually played the game at E3, and then Azure played it beyond that point, and he got a chance to play these modes. So definitely, we want to give him the lead when we get to that topic and let him, you know, we might even just run into that topic first and let him take the lead with that since, you know, he has more hands-on experience. But basically, guys, just to let y'all know what's going to happen tonight, <laughs> what's planned, and you never know what curveball may be thrown, but we definitely want to talk about NBA Live, the live run, the Pro-Am, and the Summer Circuit. You know, there's so much to talk about in this area. Like I said, Azul will be giving his hands-on impressions with those modes. And we definitely want to discuss, you know, how live fires back at NBA 2K, you know, announcing, you know, a free mode to play. And we're going to expand on that as well. Because um, like I said, Azul has a little more in-depth information that I'm sure he, well, he may or may not be able to share in regards to what that means as far as free being able to play that mode. And then also, man, again, the question is live now a respectable competitor. You know, will people make the switch or will they at least give live a try? Of course, we're definitely going to talk about Madden 16. We do have the creative director, Rex Dixon, is supposed to stop by tonight. So he should be giving us a call at some point throughout the show. Uh, when he comes on, you know, we're going to interrupt whatever we're doing at that point. Um, you know, definitely want to keep up with his time. We'll bring him in. And then, you know, we'll let him do his thing there. Now, I wanted to mention this real quick as well. You know, I decided today when speaking to Rex is, you know, we want to give one of you guys an opportunity to ask him a question directly while he's on the phone. You know, we're not going to open it up entirely because you guys know how that could go. We could be all night or people, you know, some people just asking, let's be honest, non-professional questions. Nobody has time for that. But we will award someone the opportunity to ask him a direct question. We'll bring you on the line and it's going to be a trivia question. And um, once he comes on, you know, we'll throw that question out there and we'll see, you know, who has the smarts or the wits to be able to answer the question. All right. But besides that, man, in regards to Madden 16, we also want to just go over again, the state of the game. And, you know, Rex is probably going to cover a lot of this, but you know, is Madden 16 a win for the SIM community? If so, why? And also, do you now believe in the Madden developers? All right. But then also we want to wrap up with Pro Evolution Soccer, which most of us know it as PES 2016. The demo has dropped on, uh, I know for sure it's on Xbox One because I was able to play it last night. I would assume it's on PlayStation by now. But anyway, it is out there. So we want to give our quick thoughts about the demo. And also, you know, kind of discuss a little bit. I want to dive into a little bit about the video that I made in regards to Pez, where I said that no game is perfect. And I want to, you know, expand on my point of what I was trying to make in the video. A lot of you guys caught it and, you know, some of you guys didn't. You know, you always have those, you know, stragglers that they just don't seem to understand what you're saying when you're clearly stating it. But anyway, those are the topics, guys. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and dive in so we don't, you know, get into a situation where we're not given enough time for callers. Let's go ahead and talk about live, man. And um, like I said, I'll throw it to AZ, let him pick up where he left off, and then he'll pass it to us. And there you have it. So, yeah, man, just, I guess, give us your thoughts on what they're doing, you know, how you felt about the game and even the competition <clears throat> aspect as well. Uh, Just to – I got a chance to go down to EA Tiburon uh, a little over a month ago and get my hands on NBA Live 16. Some things I cannot talk about, um, obviously, until EA talks about them themselves. But uh, just to give you a little rundown on the news that was released today with Live Pro-Am. Now, Live Pro-Am is made up of two components. Uh, summer Circuit, which is you get four other people, and you play five versus five on different courts. Um, but it's five people versus five computers. And the computers are set up in tiers. So let's just say we go to Rucker Park and we're playing tier one. The tier one uh, players that are going to be at that park are um, lower rated NBA players. And let's just say that each park has five tiers. 
once you get to that fifth tier, it'll be the harder NBA players or your more star or elite NBA players that you'll be playing against. And you can, it's, you know what I mean? It's basically like how street used to be to where, you know, uh, you go to different courts and you're playing a different set of NBA players. But, you know, it has a twist to it, and now you can play it cooperatively, you know, with four other friends. Now, you don't have to run, you can run, you know, two, three, and I believe you can even run it solo. I'm not sure. I'd have to get clarification on that. So if you wanted to just play by yourself, summer circuit, you can do that. Now, live run is something that they brought back. It is uh, basically what it was back in 09, but it's beefed up uh, with the customization options. You can now uh, game scan, uh, game face, uh, scan your face into the game. Excuse me. <clears throat> through via your cell phone, and that is going to be releasing uh, September 8th. So a week before the Pro-Am goes live, you'll be able to download the Game Face app and then have that scan ready to play for the Pro-Am. Now, uh, they said it's free, and in free is meaning that you can play Pro-Am. This is my understanding of it. Now, if I'm wrong, then, you know, I'll clarify it later. You can play Pro-Am the entire year free without even buying live. Now, what they are trying to do is get people engaged into NBA Live, and hopefully, you know, I guess once people play Pro-Am and see it for themselves, you know, they'll say, okay, well, I can pick up, you know, I want to play the full title. And that's what they're meaning uh, when they say that the game will be free. Um, now, uh, 2K, we know, has the model of virtual currency, which is VC. And in NBA Live 16, you have to earn your player. There's no such thing as buying your player. Day one, you can go out and purchase. You have to earn everything. And not only you earn it through skill points, but uh, any gear purchases, that's not monetary either. Because there are two different currencies in the game, but they're both like virtual currencies of meaning that you you earn them in the game, not you pay money to do them. So like you have a green credit card, which is like what you'll you earn points for doing different things, um, and it's kind of like cash or money or credit cards, whatever. Then you have skill points. I think they're calling them XP and SP. So skill points is what you use to upgrade your player. You know, different attributes, um, animation packages, things of that nature. And uh, SP is what you buy your gear with. So, obviously, you know, you're going to, if you're going to build your guy up, you have to take your time and actually grind it out and um, earn, <laughs> earn your guy. And that's something that's been foreign um, to games. But I have to pat EA on the back for actually doing that because in this day and time we're seeing people get mo uh, money hungry with microtransactions and EA could have easily gone that route but with them listening to the community not only their own community but 2K's community with their disdain for that they have brought this mold to the people for free so um, I mean there it is You get, as far as I mean I'll expound on it a little bit I'm going to pass it back to pass it around to Smitty and Sim and get their impressions on it as well. But And they can, you know, if they have questions on the fly, they can ask me. But you won't be able to create, you have height and weight restrictions for each position. So you can't create a seven foot two point guard and make them 300 pounds and go out there and, you know, cheese it up like you can in 2K. Uh, they have restrictions and you have different player types that you have to basically choose so you have to choose the style. So I can be a pass-first point guard. I can be a slashing point guard or a shooting point guard. You know, that's just to give you an example. And now what they've done with this mode is revolutionary in that they're trying to infringe on what 2K, you know, is weak at. And we know that 2K has problems online. And I can tell you that their online will be stable because we know EA doesn't really have problems with their servers. So if they can capitalize on that, if 2K has problems delivering on their product, 
you're going to see a lot of people sway towards Vibe, and that, I think that's why they were banking on it. And they put it out earlier for people to choose, uh, I mean, you know, get a taste of it early, and, you know, let's just say, let's just say the game drops 925 2K, and it's not right like it was last year, <laughs> you'll have an option to play something else. So it's going to be a big year for competition. And I'm going to pass it off, uh, you know, see, get their thoughts on it as well. I guess I'll pass it to Smitty. And he can give his thoughts and then pass it back to Sim because Sim has played <laughs> E3. So. All right. Well, I didn't get to play the game. You know, like so I haven't had that opportunity. You know, I wasn't at E3. And, you know, of course, um, AZ was at the event. But one thing that I'm saying, one thing that I'm definitely seeing here is the philosophy of the integrity of basketball, the sport, is being emphasized over everything else, over the gimmicks, over the flash, over the fluff. And I remember, you know, at least me and Sim, remember we when we were down at EA before, and we were talking that when OG was there at the time, and OG was talking about, like, we were talking about how live, even though in, it, even though Live 14 was rough, it still had basketball, like, it had happenings in basketball that 2K never had yet. Like, they, they never have had yet. And to see it go from there to 15, you got more of that. And now you got 16 with, I mean – the player movement and the positioning and all that stuff. Like these are things that were there in 14. And now you're seeing all that stuff come more and more into fruition. That's why it's like 2k, if 2k don't really step it up, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a serious problem. And I mean, look, I'm not saying, look, pick your poison. But what I'm saying though, is what live is hitting you with live is going old school. They going back to the days of, you know, like where you got to play the game for what it is. and You got to build up for what it is like. There is no there is no quote unquote game genie way to get, you know, what I mean, to just unlock everything and get all the get all the bonuses and the secrets and everything like you can't do that. And I love that you got to earn your keep, because now what you're going to see happen is people that are legitimately beasts in the game. You're going to see why. It's going to show in the game. Now, I mean, of course, people are going to, with it being online, people are going to try and exploit and cheese and all that. We already know that, you know, that you're going to, we're going to run into that somewhere. But what I'm saying, though, is in principle right now, what these guys are doing is they're going all out for authenticity. They're going all out for realism and they're going out for basketball. And that's what I love about what's going on here. And, you know, um, and I'll just say this before I pass it to Sim. Like, I had an opportunity. Like, I didn't play the game. This was this was way before that. But I had an opportunity back in December. And I went down to EA. And I was on a panel discussing this, discussing live. And what these guys are doing is exactly what we were talking about. We were talking about them going for authenticity Going, making it about the player and what you do in the game, not about a mode you just go through, like, you know, not a Spike Lee joint, not a, well, you're going to win all these accolades and awards anyways, regardless of what you do. Like, no, like, if you don't put the work in, you ain't coming up. And I love that part about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, they need them, and, and with, with the, with the position live is in, they don't have to necessarily, you know, uh, uh, they don't, ha they're not stuck. They're not in a rut, so to speak. Like 2K is in a forced rut. They have to cater to my team and they have, like, they have to cater to these modes. Live doesn't have to do that. See what I'm saying? They're able to forge their own path in whatever way they choose. And they've been working on realism from a very raw standpoint. And I love what these guys did, and I love what's being done here. And I can't, and that's why I'm excited. Like, like I said a few weeks ago, I, I already am looking forward to Live 17. You know what I'm saying? Because I just can't wait to see how 
They progress the game over the course of the year once it's released. And then what they do in the next game. And look what these guys are already giving us come uh, September 15th. Like, they're giving us a plethora of things to do before you even touch the game. Even if you don't buy the game, you got something free you could play for the whole year if you feel like it. I love that. So, you know, I'll uh, go ahead and I'll, I'll pass it over to uh, Sim. Man, I'm just going to be, you know, restating what, what you guys have already said for the most part. I mean, I think AZ did a great job letting us know and informing us, you know, about the mode. So anything that we all didn't know and some of you guys listening that didn't know, you know, I think he did a good job with explaining that. And, you know, I, I got to agree with Smitty on, on just a few aspects here. What's huge to me, man, is the fact that they're giving you a mode to play for free. And that's huge because it, it shows me that they understand where they are. They understand. They're not trying to come out and, and say, yeah, you know, we're we going to take down the king right now. They know. They know traditionally that they've been behind. And they're gaining back trust and gaining back ground as far as a game that's respectable. You know, I was, I was recently down at EA Tiburon. And I ran into a guy from the live team. And I had never met him before. Uh, I can't even remember his name, man. So I apologize for that. But you guys probably know him. Um, but, you know, he actually knew me. And I thought it was cool. He recognized me in the cafeteria from my videos. You know, now that I, I'm, I'm in some of my videos, he was like, hey, Sim, right? And I thought that was kind of cool. He's like, man, I watch all your videos. And my point is, what I'm getting to is that we was talking, man. We were sitting in there talking, and he was saying that, you know, we got them in basketball. He's referring to 2K. He said, basketball-wise, we got them. He's like, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, we got them. But as far as principles and how things run, he was like, you know, the things that we still need to catch up to is, like, how it looks and stuff like that, you know, and some of the fluidity and all that. And, and it's – to me, that, that sends a, a large, a huge signal to me because that's a developer knowing exactly where they're lacking and agreeing with us, the community. Is that not the stuff that we always say? It's very cool to see that, man. And, and I'm going to actually touch on that as well, you know, when we go into the Madden piece because, you know, I guess we can, you know, take care of that right after I, I wrap up this point. You kind of deal with that same situation you know when you got developers that are stating exactly where their product is you know how could you not appreciate that and yeah my man was just telling me like yo you know i'm telling you under the hood and i was telling him i said honestly man you know in live 15 is stuff to me that's done very well it just and I, i said these exact words i said the game just don't look good in motion you know it's hard for people to see it Unless they don't mind, you know, being a, a stickler like, you know, we are here on this show and most of you guys that are listening, we're about gameplay. So we'll stomach the ugliness for a while to find out what does this game really have. You know, of course, the three of us do that, but I definitely like to shout out a guy like NY Kid who does that. You know, he's always done that. He's even done that with old Maddens that I refuse to play. Like, I never really played Madden 11 because I was like, I'm done with that. And he was one of the guys who was like, nah, man, it's, it's ugly. Yes, but there's some stuff that's in there. So I commend people who do that. And like I said, to hear a developer say that himself, that's huge to me. But outside of that, man, you know, the authentic Phil, gem. Yeah. It's just like when I say when 2K comes out and I make this <laughs> assimilation or uh, – metaphor all the time. It's that pretty girl who can't cook and got <laughs> ugly feet. Of course, she looks good on your arm, but she got some flaws. And <laughs> not many people are willing to take home the five, six, or seven who can cook. You know what I mean? Plays video games, watches basketball, and all this kind of stuff. And that's what live, you know, can be. Be that six or seven that you be like, yo, I'll, I'll Supposed to be seen out in public with her, but she is the best. <laughs> I come home, the dishes washed, kids are in the bed. <laughs> See that? But now nah, people want to be out and seen with the 
the woman got the tight dress on, you know what I'm saying? She a 10, but when she get home, she ain't doing nothing. So that's what 2K is. You know what I mean? All these un- uninterruptible animations, uh, selective ball tangibility. And we know, you know, the list goes on and on with 2K of problems they haven't been addressed. But I bet you now, like Smitty said, I'm looking forward to live 16, but even more so 17 with the foundation that they've laid for in 15 are building off of 16 and will probably come to full fruition on 17. Because it's going to get to a point to where 2K is going to have to ante up. I don't care about no 8,000 new more animations um you know what i'm saying if they haven't addressed the issues of the game and we know that lies they both have different strong points you know what i mean and one of lies live is attacking k's weak point right now they didn't go after the story mode they have rising star but they didn't go after creating a storyline and all this kind of stuff because 2k is strong there you're not about to get 2K um, on my player storyline. But as far as when you take your my player online and try to play against other people and having to purchase stuff, live is attacking all that with ferociousness. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting what kind of battle uh, 17 is because 16 right now, uh, unbeknownst to people, is – getting ugly because 2k is is, i mean uh live is putting it out there we hadn't seen any gameplay from 2k i know shout out to uh, azar and og i know they're over there itching to put out gameplay and show what they've been working on but i'm pretty sure that they you know have bosses to answer to and they say no we're not gonna put out gameplay until such and such date but i know they're over there itching in their seats and when this information dropped today I know they wanted to put out something as far as gameplay. But, hey, like I said in my video, it's right there in the title. These two games going head-to-head equals a win for us. I just wanted to interject that. I didn't mean to cut you off, uh, Phil. No, nah, that's that's perfect, man. And, yeah, it's, it, I'm telling you, you, you can't be more pleased with the competition aspect, man. And you see what competition does. I love that. I love that. You know, because clearly, like Azura said earlier, clearly somebody tipped somebody's hand or something, or ha- somebody know knew something, because that's very ironic <laughs> that they and like Azura said, you know, you don't even have to be Einstein to figure out. Okay, one of these games was intending to do this, and the other one may have just, you know, put that as a secondary feature. It is very clear to see that. So. Yeah. But again, that's what competition does, man. That's what competition does. So it's a wonderful thing, man. And I just got confirmation that uh, Rex actually will be on the line in about 15 minutes. So for you guys who missed the beginning of the show, we're going to have Rex Dixon, the creative designer. You know, he's like a <laughs> almost like a, a, a fourth member now. He's been on the show a couple of times. And um we're definitely going to get him in, man. And like I said, we're going to give you an opportunity to ask him a question directly. You know, one, you know, I guess I would say lucky listener. That's what, what you want to call it. We'll have the opportunity to ask a question directly to Rex. It will be a trivia question that we'll ask you. And then whoever gets it right uh, here, this will be the instructions on how to submit it. Cause we're not going to, you know, <laughs> answer each call to find out what your answer is. We'll have you do this. I'm sure if you're listening to this show, you have the Twitter handle from one of us. Send us a tweet with the answer, hashtag SimStandardRadio, and um, whoever gets the answer right, we'll bring you on the line, and you can ask him your question directly. Also, you know, in the meantime, we're going to go into the Madden topic and give our piece, give some brief impressions. Um, I know, you know, Rex is interested in hearing that as well. And then, you know, we'll bring him on. So. Definitely in the meantime, hashtag Sim Standard Radio with any questions that you may want us to ask him. I did receive a few already. Uh, keep in mind, guys, we're not going to be able to ask him a thousand questions. You know, we'll have him for as long as he allows us to have them. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys up front. I'm going to try to pull the, the best question. You know, I don't want to rate anybody's question, but 
I'm going to try to pull some of the best questions to ask first. So, you know, you guys know how that order goes. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about it, man. So we've been waiting for this moment for a long time, guys. You know, you know, we've been just telling you guys to be patient. You know, we got more news coming. When we can tell you, we, we will. And now we can talk a little bit. Now, you know, we're not going to give a full review. Um, the reason why is because as of right now, if I'm not mistaken, Azua and Smitty doesn't actually have the game yet. It's on the way. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to have the game already. As you guys probably already know, you've seen a couple of my videos. I attended an early capture event um, just recently, um, very, very near recently. You know, it probably explains why I wasn't on the show last week. And fortunate enough, before I left, games actually came and I was able to get my copy. And, you know, I've been able to play it. So we'll give our light impressions and we'll kind of talk about, you know, where we feel the game is going as well as, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say why we feel like it's a win for the sim community, and we'll explain that. So I'll keep mine very brief, and then I'll throw it to Smitty and Azor. Guys, man, it's what we've been telling you, man. You know, and the first thing I want to preference is this, and I'm going to probably have Rex restate this when he comes on. I see a lot of people ask questions like, why they didn't do this? Why they didn't do that? When are they going to do this? When are they going to do that? Oh, this isn't right. Oh, when? They, or do they not know about this? Do they not know about that? Anytime you have the creative director say out of his own mouth, hey, man, we're not where we want to be yet. These are direct quotes. We're not where we want to be yet. There's a lot of old stuff we got to get out of the game as well as put into the game. He just recently said on Game Changes Radio, shout outs to Mad Scientist and Shopmaster. Rex just recently said that their vision is to have poetry in motion. They want to get rid of all of the warps and the pops and the shifting and all that. And it's it's crazy because that's been one of my biggest complaints about Madden as far as player movement. How many times have we talked about that? And it's almost like they stifle my complaint because I already know. Yeah, we know, too. <laughs> yeah, we know, Sam. That's what we want to do, too. And, and that's the, the benefit of being able to be behind the curtain, as well as having guys like Rex and Clint, because those are the guys who are more open to you all, as far as you're able to interact with them, that have the same vision. So I just wanted to say that real quick, but just my impressions, man. I, I'm going to be real, real quick here. Madden 16, in my opinion, is that game that we've been waiting for to be the turnkey game. We said that last year. Y'all remember when we said before we were able to see 15, we were hoping that Madden 15 would be that game. And Madden 15 turned the corner a bit. But Madden 16, guys, I'm here to tell you, it's the game. It is the game that lays the foundation that finally shows you what Rex and the new guys want to do. And you can see the building pieces. You know, you guys know here on the show, how long have we talked about DB and wideout interactions? How many times have you heard us talk about that? How many times have you heard the three of us talk about real gang tackles and organic tackles? And to see it come out the way it did in the first iteration of having actual gang tackles, not physics, because we know it's been there a couple of years, but actual gang tackles. Now I see, man, wow. I can't wait to see how it's going to be the next year and the year after that, now that they got that base set. You know, now you it's, it's trait play, you know, base gameplay where, and I, I looked at some of that last night, you know, some receivers don't have the aggressive catch trait, so they won't be able to do that. So what does that tell me? Now players are starting to play a little more like themselves. They don't quite have the player likeness yet, which we all know that, including the developers but they're starting to play like themselves. And that's a huge start. So just to sum it up, man, I'm telling you, this game will not be perfect. And it will not have every detailed element that you all are expecting in your own mind. I can promise you it won't. Well, some people actually have told me everything they wanted has been done. So shout outs to those guys. I'm happy for you. But a good amount of us still want more as well as the developers. So I will say that it is a good game. The game plays very well. Does it have problems that you might see from time to time? Yeah. I've seen a couple. Nothing earth-shattering. 
But I've, you know, I've seen stuff like, oh, we got to get that fixed right there. But if you take the game for what it is, this is a very good playing football game. Very good playing game, man. That, that's just my opinion on it. I hope you guys are able to enjoy it. You know, stay tuned. I'm going to get some gameplay out when I can. I know you've seen some of the sizzle stuff I did, and you guys know how that goes, man. I went to the capture event. You know, there's certain things that we're able to do. Um, I think I have gameplays coming, but if not, I think we may be able to stream at some point next week. And, you know, at the very latest, it will be Thursday when EA Access comes out. So pay attention to my gameplays, man. I know some people are a little leery about some of the stuff they've seen. The earlier guy playing on rookie or whatever. Listen, man, I'm here to tell you. When I start streaming it, make sure you tune in. Y'all know how I do. We're going to go through it. And y'all going to see good gameplay as well as some things that we might want to see improve going forward. So there's my thoughts, man. This is a, a very solid game. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will be able to see that for yourselves. Um, so go ahead, Smitty, man. Give your quick impressions or, you know, whatever it is you want to discuss in regards to Madden 16. All right. Yeah, I'll just basically say because, like, so, you know, I'm still – I'm not going off of most recent experiences of yet. But one thing is that, you know, like, people are seeing the animations and they're seeing guys – shift into position on some of those two-man animations and stuff like that and there's some people feel like it's not truly organic please believe you all of that you're seeing is not everything that's just the tip of the iceberg right there like gameplay wise when you see the game run and you get to see some full gameplay shown i'm telling you these guys are putting that work in and like sim said the key thing here to take away from this game, and that's why that's why I did like about a few weeks back or a month ago, I did a full blown feature rundown as far as gameplay aspects, what has been done, because it's like in terms of progress wise, they're doing what we've been saying they need to do. They've been doing it. So to come out here and deny it and say like oh they're not doing this and they didn't do that and they didn't do like no they, they're doing it now if you just want to deny it just for the sake of doing so then knock yourself out i'm not gonna hold anything against you on that that's on you but um what i will say is that in regards of what we wanted for the longest amount of time regarding this game we're finally getting it now, you know, and Rex has already said, just like you said, and I listen to Game Changers Radio as well, you know, um, especially the other day, Rex came on and he talked about things like the animation quality. I want to get that right. And that's where he talked about the pops and the warps and all that. So all these things they want to get right. And they're telling you that, and this is a key thing to take away. They're not telling you that at the next E3. They're telling you that today. They're telling you that now, before the game came out. And even when Sim was at E3, that's why I said I'll be retweeting his interview because these are things that he said, like, they're telling you before the game is even coming out. They're like, look, we got a lot more stuff we want to do. He didn't even want to take the championship belt from um, Hip Hop Gamer. You know, he's like, right. no, 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 we ain't there yet. We ain't, we don't deserve it yet. We, we still putting that work in. So... I'm just saying that Madden 16 is work. Madden 16 is work in progress. But like I said, you know, from the show we was on previously, I said then when Madden 25 was out, I said I believe in another two years they will be in prime position to really take it, and they are with 16. That like don't don't like get your hands on the game, whether you rent it or whatever. Get your hands on the game, play the game for what it is, and see what the game truly brings to the table. I mean, look, at this point, I'm not worried about the try-hard nation. We already know what those dudes are about. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about, all I'm concerned about is the quality of the game going forward and what these guys are doing because we, it's, it, there is no question. These guys have proven the worth and they're showing it with the work they've been putting in. Putting in. And they're getting the game there that we've been desiring and that we've been demanding for for the longest time. And you're truly going to see it coming to fruition in Madden 16. You're going to see it. It's going to be undeniable. 
And I mean, and like the group I referenced in next um last week uh, with uh, VF and them, they're seeing these things unfold, and they're like, "Yo, that looks beautiful." At the same time, there's stuff in there that I don't like when uh like the animations where you'll see animations where guys are going down for a tackle, and then you just see everybody on everybody else on the field just stop. They'll just start walking casually like nothing else is going on as the animation is still playing out. That I would love to see cleaned up and rectified. Okay. So if they could clean that kind of stuff up, you know, that would be awesome. But I'm loving what these guys have done overall this year. So I'll pass it to Azura. AZ, you there? AZ, AZ. Well, all right, y'all. While we wait for AZ, um, I'll comment uh, quickly again. Yeah, man. I mean, it, like I said, I really don't have much more left to say. When when it comes from the, the developer's mouth, it's almost like it's a mute point. Like all of the complaints, I've basically heard them address all of the complaints and saying that they want to get to that. You can't ask for better than that. I mean, you really can't. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, team mad or nothing like that. If, if if it ain't for you, it ain't for you. And see, I respect those people. I saw a dude who left a comment on one of my videos saying, still just ain't my cup of tea yet, man. But, you know, good, you know, I appreciate the work you do. That that right there, that's the guy that I would give a man's handshake. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Be a man about yeah. yours and move on. You know, I don't. I just don't get the people, and you know, I'm not even going to go into that because there's no need to address it. But what I'm saying is, with anything, whether it's an iPhone or a Samsung phone or a TV or car, if the people who make it tell you exactly what they're doing, that kind of kills the notion. And that's just yeah. my opinion. You know. It shouldn't be anything else that you really can say when they're upfront about what they're doing and they answer your question. So exactly, that's, like that's what I said. Mm-hmm. That's what I yeah, said. Hashtag try hard nation. That's it. That's all. That's all I gotta say. Try hard nation. I mean, hey, you had to do. You had to do it out here today, trying to say that EA ripped off a of 2K with Pro Am. Like, come on, dude. Pro Ams existed way before these games. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's it's dictionary defined. Pro Am is a is like a tournament or an outing where there's a mix of celebrity I mean not celebrity, excuse me, amateurs and pros. That's it. So if you don't want it, you just don't want it. You you just don't want it to be you don't want it to be good. So you just want to complain. And that's what I'm saying. Try hard nation, you got that. Cause this is what we wanted. Like that's what we wanted these things. We wanted these interactions. We wanted the chucks and the presses. We wanted these these audible controls to be like 2K. It, they're doing it. Like, it's literally happening in front of our faces. We How long do we go on about double-team pass blocking? Look what's going on here. Like, we wanted all this stuff to happen, and it's happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> So at this point, if you don't want it, you just don't, and that's and and it's okay. It's okay. It's just that you know you just don't want it. Yeah, man. It's, that's just you know. And the last thing I'll say real quick, and um, we do have uh, Rex is actually on the line now, so we're gonna bring him in. And um, if once we get Azua back, AZ, we'll bring you in after Rex. Let's go ahead and you know get him on. But. You know, I'll just reconfirm real quick with you guys. Like I said, if, if you're looking for us to be the guys who are tearing things down and all that, that that's I'm not doing that. And, uh, there's no point in doing that when we now have a relationship with the developers. We are all on the same page. It's all about improving the product. I could care less. You know, you really want to know why I don't necessarily show obvious flaws? Because I've seen them. <laughs> earlier in the year, you know, with these games. I've already discussed it with the development. So YouTube is pointless for me to do a a video just to appease a certain group of individuals, you know, guys who kind of be like, hey man, I want you to, I don't, I don't have to do that. Y'all need to understand that. Like now I'm on a different train of getting the game better and better and better. 
We have the ear. We have a, a healthy relationship. Let's move forward. And that's just it. That That's just it. Take it or leave it. But we're going to go ahead and bring Rex in, man. Um, like I said, continue with the questions. Send them to at SimStandard Radio. We'll keep Rex on for as long as he wants to be on. And let me go ahead and throw the trivia question at you real quick before I get Rex on the line. The person that will be able to have the opportunity to ask your direct question to Rex, very first person who can name a title that Rex worked on for prior to working on football, name another title he may have worked on within EA prior to working with football, being Madden or NCAA. And the first person that answers with that will let you ask your question live. All right, so let's go ahead and get Rex on, man. Rex, we definitely appreciate you taking time, man, to, to come on the show. Like like I said earlier, I feel like you're almost like a, a fourth member. We've talked to you so much, <laughs> and I just saw you. But um, how you doing tonight, man? Great. I uh, just got back from Minneapolis. We were out with uh, Game Informer, uh, showing them the game and then talking about it with them. Uh, so I just got back tonight, and, uh, you know, I wanted to call in. Well, we definitely always appreciate you calling, man. So we do have a few questions, but, you know, what I like to always do is, and it seemed to work very well in the interview, is just, you know, if you could real quickly just let everybody know again what your vision was for Madden 16 and, you know, what your full vision is from this point going forward. Because what we feel like, we feel like Madden 16 is finally that foundation to build on. Okay, um, so the vision this year going in, like as you guys know, the overall vision it doesn't change uh, year over year is authentic simulation football. I've been in place since I got there. Um, but this year's specific vision for gameplay was um, a collection of features that rolled up to this marketing term we called air supremacy. It's just a battle for uh, you know, the ball in the sky. Um, and, you know, obviously the, the most paramount uh, sub-theme within that was the wide receiver DB interaction. Um, but also the, the quarterback uh, stuff, the new quarterback mechanics and the quarterback AI was a very critical part of that, um, you know, as well as, you know, the new catching mechanics, the multiplayer catch interactions, uh, all the new Chuck press interactions, the hand fighting, all that stuff. Um, we really were setting out to revolutionize the way uh, the passing game in Madden is played. Um, you know, uh, what we call a disruptive innovation, a gameplay mechanic change that's so big that it kind of fundamentally alters how the game is played. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that was the big theme. And um, we also obviously did the defensive stuff. We did the gang tackling and a whole bunch of other features. We, we focused on post-play a lot, animations a lot. Um, I could go on and on and on, but uh, that, that was the gist of it. Definitely, man. And Smitty, you got a question real quick? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have any questions at the moment. You know, um, like with because, like, yeah, my basically from the past experience that I've had with the game and from seeing what's been put out there, I mean, I'm really like blown back because I know things have changed and things have been added to the game since I've last experienced it. So I'm just looking forward to having that full on experience. Um, in terms of like experiencing how different teams will play against me and taking some of them L's like you, you know, like we've talked about in terms of playing against the CPU on all pro, like I want to experience what that's like and, you know, feel that difference between 15 and, and 16. So I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. And one quick question, Rex, I do see a couple of them coming in. So we might as well try to go ahead and fill the few while we have you. Um, this is a great question. This comes out from one of our, comes from one of our loyal callers, uh, 205. He wants to know, will EA, and this, I guess it's perfect timing because the ratings, you know, czar is no longer there. Maybe there may be an opportunity for a change. He wants to know if you guys have ever thought about, or will you ever think about reaching out to maybe sports science and those guys with kind of having, I don't know if you have a direct relationship with them, but have you ever thought about maybe trying to gather some information like that to help with either motion capture or, cap, you know, being able to calculate ratings for players? Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about ratings for a little bit. Um, so, you know, the Donnie Moore uh, era, as we'll call it, um, and the way that ratings have always been done has been there, obviously, for a long, long, long time, long before I got there. 
But as gameplay creative director, obviously gate ratings uh, and have a huge impact on the game. So I have to always consider, you know, it, it falls under my area of, of responsibility. So I like everything else, like tackling, blocking, catching, passing. Um, it's one of the things that I think about and think about, am I happy with it to where I want it to be? And I think you guys know that I'm one of my big goals initially was to get the ratings down a little bit, to not have so many players at 99. Uh, you know, in, up in the 90s. And, and one of the reasons for that is I've always felt like the game on normal speed plays slightly too fast for me. Um, but, you know, I, I realize that that's a very subjective opinion and a lot of people feel differently. Um, but, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll put the game on slow because I, I just think it's more strategic and you have more time to think things through in that mode. Uh, but that notwithstanding, we've been trying to do that. We haven't been too successful, but that's still a goal of mine. But when Donnie gave his resignation, uh, which you know, I was really upset. Uh, Donnie was a very valued um, employee of mine, and I really liked him as a friend as well. Um, but it, it kind of gave me an opportunity to really stop and think about um, how we might do ratings differently going forward. It's like, well, if there's going to be a change of the guard, um, what direction do I really want this to go in? And, you know, achieve him on my mind was kind of like, I'd like to do something that takes some of the subjectivity out of it. Like, is there any data um, that we could pull from other than just like maybe reading pro football focus websites and, and stuff like that, um, that would give us uh, a more accurate representation. Um, so I've been talking to a lot of people. I've been talking to guys who run Madden uh, rating sites. I've been talking to, uh, you know, pro football focus guys. I've been talking to a lot of different people. Um, as who, you know, individually would like to replace Donnie Moore to entire scouting services that actually work with the NFL teams. Um, so I'm, I'm probably a year out before I can implement something like that, maybe even two, because, uh, you know, depending on how fast it goes and how quickly we come to a decision. Um, but we're definitely thinking about something along those lines where we can back up the ratings with scientific data. Um, and telemetry, and I have a variety of sources that I'm talking to and could potentially pull from to achieve that goal. Um, so I, I hope that's kind of answer you wanted. I, I don't have anything concrete right now, but I am, and I think we are looking to make a pretty significant change in how we handle that going forward. Yeah, but I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, yeah, that's, and that's definitely good to hear. Uh, let me see if I can find another one for you. One guy's asking why only running backs and cornerbacks and wide receivers have, why are they the only ones with a speed drop? And are there any chances of you using Microsoft tracking database for new replay systems? Uh, okay, I, I couldn't quite hear. Is that, was that about the speed decay? Was there a question about the speed decay? Yeah, they're asking why it's, it seems to be, they're saying it, it appears to be only certain positions, which is running back, quarterback, and wide receiver. So they, they want to know why is it only, or is it only just those positions that there's a drop? All right. Um, there, there's a few kind of different answers to this question. Um, the speed algorithm this year has not changed significantly, but what they've added is is kind of a system to show how speed decays based on the number of years in the league. Um, now, the other thing that that kind of gets us is um, it, it kind of helps rein in some of the OP-ness of the, of the new mechanics and that when we kind of started lowering things down a little bit, it just felt more like, like an actual NFL game instead of like Madden. Um, and you guys know that anytime I see something like that, I get, you know, I'm like, we should keep doing this. And um, so I was kind of behind Donnie's decision uh, to lower the speed ratings uh, a little bit uh, based on, you know, age, age and, and, and years in the league is the main reason you're seeing that decay. Um, <clears throat> but it helps achieve my goal as well of not having so many players with 90 plus speed. And, and the biggest thing of all, guys, is, is getting the game to shift away from that, that theme that speed is the most important rating. And that players who have crap ratings across the board, but their speed and their acceleration is higher dominant. Like you remember all those years of that. It was all about who had the highest speed rating, which was just completely unstoppable. Um, so that's part of it as well. So there, there's actually a lot of different reasons for that change, but I, I completely support Donnie's decision to uh, to do it. Well, we definitely love it. You know, like I'm glad that. Uh, 
the ratings are taking a bit of a drop because as we've seen, like people would do FBG rosters and they would have players rated significantly lower, but it all made sense. Like your top tier players performed well and like everything was playing out pretty balanced, even with the ratings drop. So it is nice to see that we're seeing, you know, QBs with deep accuracy, they taking a slight drop, seeing these speed ratings take a drop too. Because while people on the surface, they may fret to an extent, but I definitely do not fret that at all. Don't worry about it because the gameplay is still, it's going to all make sense when it comes to actually playing it hands on. Yeah. So that's why I'm um, glad that happened. I'd also like to cover uh, on the subject of ratings, because I know this topic is going to come up about passing accuracy. We've talked about it a lot, you and I, uh, you guys, uh, over the, the course of the years, we've met and played the game. Um, it, that was a really tough decision to make because, you know, people have expectations. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember last year in the MUD tournament when the guy had the chance to get Super Bowl tickets and he threw a deep pass to a wide-open receiver with Peyton Manning and it sailed on him and he lost the game and he lost <laughs> Super Bowl tickets. And, you know, we, we talk about that as like, well, you know, that's dice rolls. That's just how the game works, right? Um, so going lowering the accuracy ratings for quarterbacks, especially for deep throw accuracy, was a, was a tough decision because people have an expectation. If I'm Brady, if I'm Manning, if I'm Rodgers, if my feet are set in the pocket, I'm going to be accurate 100% of the time. And that's just not football. Um, the highest rated quarterback in the NFL for deep throw accuracy is 60% of Aaron Rodgers. I think Kaepernick is number two. But when you consider 60%, um, you know, that means 40% of your throws are missing. And, and the game just wasn't delivering on that. And, uh, you know, I get the argument. It's like, hey, my feet are set. I'm clean in the pocket. I have a 90 rated quarterback. How does that miss? And, you know, what I would say to you is watch football on TV and tell me what you see. Um, Because if we keep saying that we want what we see on Sundays, we have to be all in. And and that's why you're going to see some of those accuracy ratings come down. Um, And uh, you're going to see, you know, part of that is also to deter people from playing Madden ball and throwing four verticals every down and and just like sailing it on you and and throwing Hail Marys. Like, I hate that crap. And and so hopefully when you start feeling that 60% uh, deep throw accuracy rating, you're going to start learning to work the ball over the middle a little bit, work the sidelines a little bit, start being an actual football player instead of a Madden ball player. Man, that's great to hear. And um, some guys are saying that, that I'm breaking up a bit, so I apologize, guys, if that's happening. You know, let me know if that continues. Um, one other quick question, Rex, and I, I think, you know, we might as well, we have a guy who did win the trivia. He said uh, <laughs> that you worked with Medal of Honor. So. We'll definitely bring him in. Um, And let me just preface this before we do it. It's area code 409. You can ask a question. Um, If if Rex chooses to allow you to ask another question, you can. But keep in mind, guys, we're professionals here. Let's keep it very professional. You don't want to mess up these type of opportunities because he's taking time out of his schedule to, uh, you know, talk to the community. So let's go ahead and get you in. Area code 409, man. Go ahead and ask your question, man. Rex is on the line. How you doing, Rick? Thanks for uh, taking the call. I'm doing good. How are you? All right. Uh, I have a question. This on the uh, this draft. I mean, I'm sorry. Is the speed rate of the draft? How is it going to affect the uh, rookie draft class? Are they speed going to be the same as not as high as the regular players, or are they going to be the same as past man? So uh, right now, the rookies are the fastest. Uh, I think. There's a couple of rookies that are like some of the faster players in the game. So you will see that speed will be more of an advantage with rookies and their other ratings will kind of balance that out. Um, but I don't think there's a significant change in rookie speed ratings from year to year because the only change, like I said, speed ratings are almost always based on 40 times. And the only the, the drops you're seeing are based on the, the guys who have been in the league for a lot of years. And so you won't see your rookies being impacted that much versus how they've been in the past. Uh, it's only the the ones who are impacted by that decay. Okay, uh, I mean, like the draft class, that's the same with them. Like the Excuse me? draft class, I'm, I'm talking about uh, the draft classes. Like when you draft, are they those speeds gonna be the same as fast man, or they'll take a hit? Too? Like we see a, see the six four ninety six speed receiver there. 
he will he will decay over time in your CFM league or in your dynasty. So if you're like um, if you're playing a franchise mode, uh, so year two you might see a slight speed drop for that receiver. Year three, a slight speed, something like that. So you know you play ten seasons with a guy, and his speed rating is going to drop just based on age and wear and tear. All right, that's what I need to know. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, thank you. And thanks for for calling in, man. Thanks and um, call, man. we're not gonna take all of Rex's time. So you know, like I did in the interview, I guess um, <laughs> we'll try to see what we can get from Rex. So I guess the last question, Rex. Um, I mean, you are the creative director. Is there anything that you can tell us that you know? Because you, you did it last year, and I don't know if you did it on purpose, but you kind of threw a nugget out at E three. So some people really listened to what you said, and it actually did show up. Um, in this year's product. So is there anything that you feel kind of confident about that you know you're going after next year that you could somewhat speak on at this point? Uh, I, I would encourage you guys to think about now that like gameplay is solid, presentation is solid, graphics are solid, um, think about the rest of the game and think about areas that are still not up to that same level. So if you, if you think about the game broken down by different components, and then you think about the quality level of each of those, and you can think about modes, and you can think about stuff like that, um, where are the weak areas? And if you identify those weak areas, that's probably exactly what we're going to be working on next year, um, as well as some, some surprises. As you guys know, we have a huge appetite now for advanced teams and exploratory projects. And um, there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that unfortunately I can't, I, w I wasn't able to show you when you were down because it's like super, super, super NDA. Like nobody can find out we're working on this yet stuff. Um, <laughs> but it's big. It's yeah. very big. And uh, there's one in particular, a little side project. And, and you know, uh, you know, it just, it's so good. It makes me want to like shout it from the rooftops and be like, wait until you guys get your hands on this. Oh my God. Uh, it's a long way from coming from fruition, but the, uh, just the possibilities of some of the stuff we're doing with advanced teams are very, very exciting. Um, so I know that wasn't very specific for you, but I I'm sure you can figure it out. If you listen to my interviews, I I've at least spilled three or four ideas that we're doing in, uh, in 17 already in, in past interviews and interviews at E3. Whenever people ask me where I want to go next and what things I'm interested in doing in the future, I usually spill. Yep. Um, and that's what we tell them. If you just listen, I mean, it, it, <laughs> yeah. just, just use your comprehension skills, but and and I, th I guess you could probably confirm this as well. Just because that they're going to work on different areas, guys, is not to say that nothing will be done. Like, and, you know, because I know what they're going to do, Rex. Some people will take your words out of context and say, oh, did you hear what he said? Now the gameplay is there. He's not saying the gameplay is totally there. I think what he's saying, and, and I'll let you finish up with that. I think what he's saying is that, there may, there may not be anything that's groundbreaking in terms of gameplay, but I would assume that it would still be, you know, tweaks, tuning, additions, you know, light additions, or just, ref, you know, refining what's already put in place. Is that correct? Oh, well, we, we still have plenty of big ideas coming. I, what, I meant, what I meant by that was saying that, you know, I'm not just the gameplay creative director. I'm creative director of all of in-game, and I share an office with Colby Launchbot, who owns Moe's. And mm. um, if you think about the entire product, all modes, all components, um, there are some pretty significant weaknesses still in my eyes, in Colby's eyes, that we need yeah. to fix. And, and that means that we need to shift some resources over there and have a year focused on bringing that, that element of the game to where it needs to go. Um, I know that one of, those, uh, one of those big things is probably really obvious to you guys, and one of those things you probably will never see coming um, until it hits you and it's going to be big. Um, but all that kind of meant was that I think like gameplay presentation and graphics, I think you could reasonably argue that they're all like in the 80, 80 plus range at this point, but there's some portions of the game that I feel are still in the 70 range and that's not good enough. And so I want to go attack those areas and get them fixed too. Um, but that, that's kind of what I meant by that. All right, man. Well, yeah, I just wanted to right. allow you to clarify that because sometimes when we do it, you know, we're just putting words in your mouth. So, <laughs> but man, okay. you know, it, we definitely thank you, man. It's, it's been a great cycle, you know, coming down and interacting with you and, 
you know, I'm sure we'll still continue to talk offline about next year and things like that. But, you know, you know, we always appreciate it, but we always want to at least give you that upfront, you know, and support. We appreciate everything that you guys do as well. I know you said about us, but, you know, we've never had this type of activity with developers where they would sit, talk to you, whether it's good or bad. And, you know, one thing you said on the show the other night is you, you said, I want to hear it all. I want to hear the, the ones who hate the game and the ones who love it. And to me, you can't ask for better, not only a developer, but the creative director. You can't ask for a better, you know, relationship with the community than that. So on behalf of everyone, we definitely thank you. The product yeah. is looking very good, man. So we look forward to the future. All right, guys. Thanks again for everything. I hope everyone enjoys the game. All right. Oh, yeah, so we that will. is that is Rex, guys. We're gonna let him go. And uh yeah, there you have it. And I mean, again, it's coming from the horse's mouth. We appreciate Rex taking the time and giving us a call. Uh, so let's go ahead and bounce back to Azure. Uh let him give his uh, you know, brief impressions on Madden 16, where he thinks the state of the game is. I mean, Matt, Rex pretty much said it, but I definitely want to hear his take. After that, what we'll do, guys, since it's already uh 906 we have about 53 minutes or so i'm gonna go ahead and open it up to call us after that bring 757 in first and then if we can get back to pairs we will uh let me just give you an update we have let's see one two three four five we have five calls in queue not including 757 so let's all agree that we'll all be quick <laughs> so we can get everyone in so yeah. once we bring in the callers, it's going to go in rotation. The first call, Smitty will reply, then Azure, then a me, and then back around and around we go. So let's all be quick, including us. I know we tend to talk too much so we can get everyone's question answered and everyone on the line. So go ahead, AZ, and then after that, we'll go ahead and bring in our good buddy, 757. Thanks again to Rex for calling in, and uh, welcome to Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I apologize because I missed the rest segment. I actually, when I pulled up to the house, I had a contractor who was here and I had to talk to him. So I missed the segment, so I had to go back and re-listen to it to catch all Rex to say, all that Rex has said. But my vision and where I think you know people will like or Madden 16 is basically what has been said and been shown already. I know people have concerns about the catching, uh, animations, and all that kind of stuff. But until you actually play the game and get the, your hands on it for yourself, you won't really be able to tell. It's not, you know, a video is not going to do it justice. You have to play it and see for yourself how this game was developed. And I think that people are going to be pleasantly pleased, pleasantly surprised. And this is that term key game that we've said, you know, verbatim uh, before, and you heard it from Rex as well, that now that they have this foundation to build upon, now it's time to start wowing people even more. So, um, you know, I, I still, you know me, I, I'm probably going to harp on this. I, I mean, I'll wait until I get my retail copy to say this. But the passing game, to me, still needs to be revolutionized of throwing to a spot and not being tied to an interaction. And I, I, we'll see how it turns out because maybe they have, you know, developed it to a point to where I don't feel that way anymore. But as I look at videos and, and, and see, I still think in my eyes, uh, it, it can get there. Like the passing game can still be built upon even more so. Uh, I like what they've done with the passing mechanics and the wide receiver DB interactions this year. But uh, time will tell, and, and we'll see. I mean, I can't wait for people to get their hands on the game. It also ba just basically comes down to me waiting for, you know, hoping that they don't nerf the game for casual. Um, because I was very pleased with Madden 15 before the patch. And then after the patch, not so much. Um, and then after playing Madden 16 at Community Day, I couldn't come back and play Madden 15, uh, especially not with those passing mechanics uh, being in the game in 16. So we'll see. And the verdict is out. And, but I, like I said, I hope, I'm waiting for people to get their hands on the game because that's when you can really tell, you know, what kind of product you have. But I mean, to go that long, but I'm going to pass it to Smitty and we're going to keep rolling. Oh no, I didn't have anything else to to say, you know, from uh what he had said. So we go ahead and uh so it you get seven five seven on the line. 
Yeah, man, let's go ahead and get 757 in and then we can get rolling with the rest of the calls. 757, man, I've I've been waiting for this day, man. (laughs) Now y'all know what's up, so (laughs) definitely give us your reflections, man. Uh, Well, when it comes to gameplay, I don't really think that there's nothing to be said. I think that from what I've seen, everything from waiting momentum to seeing Jason Witten still fighting for yards mm-hmm. um, to seeing um, a defensive back pop the ball out and the wide receiver still not having to be able to go after the ball that the DB grabs him, uh, grabs him and pulls him to the ground, uh, being able to throw back shoulder fades, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm going to discuss is EA's transparency and innovation. What we, what people are, I think that I've seen in this whole process, I've been with you guys for almost two years now. It might be a little long. I don't know how long it's been since the very first time that I called in. But for the first time, the transparency that these guys have had with the community has been a win-win for both. It's been a win for us because we've been able to voice our opinions to you guys. You guys have been able to take the literature and the conversations that we're having and bring it to them. They've been able to listen to what the community wants and be able to implement it in a way where it doesn't appear or seem to be like it's forced down our throat. And that's very hard to do. They also showed us the good and the bad in front of our face, which is also as a company, very hard to do. They've been able to, as far as innovation, be able to put the things of a wide receiver DB interaction into a game where it doesn't look overly scripted or it doesn't look robotic. And that's very hard to do because a wide receiver and a DB, anything can happen once the ball is in the air. And it even is even more unpredictable the moment that somebody tries to attack the ball. And from what I'm seeing, that those whether they're script animations or animations can be interrupted or whatever, it looks clean. That's very hard to do. I, it, there's so many elements in this game that I'm seeing that I have to give those guys credit for really busting their ass and making this happen. And again, I would continue to say to not have fear to give us a more simulation game when majority of the people I feel say that they want it, but really don't want it. You follow me? So when I see people, you can't complain when you have a 170 pound running back in the game and he's trying to block an all pro defensive end that's 250 pounds and he halfway makes the blocks, but he gets a hold on third and five. Now you're back at 3rd and 15 and get pissed off. That's football. You should have switched out your bigger back or your fullback. That's a better blocker to block that damn end or that outside linebacker. Are you ready to play that game of chess? I am. This is the most excited that I've ever been in playing a video game. This is also the only time that I've seen in video game history where we've been able to talk to a creative director which 2K is not doing personally, and for him to tell us what's up. The good, the bad, and the ugly. He doesn't really have to. But the fact that he's a gamer and that he wants to put out the best product and that he was sick of the BS, like we've been sick of the BS for the last 10 years, is why we're at this moment. So people say, well, where have all this money that EA's made went? Now you see. It's went into the the, the innovation that's went into Madden, the innovation that's went into 
NBA Live that was on top quite a few years ago. If you remember when this basketball thing hit and this thing switched over live with that deal. And then, yeah. and also games like Star Wars that look like you're looking at a movie that is also an EA product. I can't wait to the 25th. I can't wait to be able to play this game of chess. Now, I continue to tell a lot of guys in, in the connected franchise that I'm in, that I'm a co-commissioner in, that you know that you got to get, get ready to play football, don't you? And everybody that's through those fly routes, everybody has through those money routes because my linebacker wouldn't move. If those players are reacting the way that they I've seen, that they appear to be reacting, it's, it's the dawn of a new day and now the rabbit got the gun. Guys, I appreciate everything. I appreciate what you've done. I appreciate your hard work. I appreciate Rex for coming on the show and talking. I appreciate the EA team for giving us what we want. Now, community, don't stop bitching. Now that we got to learn something new, now that we got to play football. Learn it, lab it, figure it out. Let's get to the next generation. Let's get out of this dinosaur stage or this Madden stage and let's play ball. I appreciate y'all, man. Definitely appreciate you, man. You, oh, you yeah, already man. know. And I, I can't wait for you, NYKia, even DJ81, virtual footballer, Neff1. I can't wait for you guys in particular to get your hands on it. You know, 205. Guys that I that understand the process, understand everything is not 100% perfect, listen to what the developer says, and see the improvement. Because I think you're definitely going to be pleased in the direction. All right, so before we take the callers, two quick announcements. Number one, guys, remember, you guys who donated to the cause for me going to E3, hit me up. I need to know first what game you guys would want because I need to go ahead and do this drawing. I think I'm going to do it this week. Uh, it was four of you guys who donated, so I want to do the drawing. Whoever wins, like I told you, you'll be able to get a game of your choice. I will purchase it myself, send it to you. I want to get that done because I assume a lot of you guys, it might be mad. So don't forget to hit me up about that as well as, you know, the other stuff that came with your donation, like being able to, you know, have a segment on the show, having me promote you on YouTube, whatever. Don't forget to do that because I, I want to honor that. Second announcement, I have a copy I have an extra copy of Madden 16 in my possession. It's an Xbox One copy. I'm sorry, PS4 guys. I have my PS4 copy. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get another one. I have an Xbox One copy. I will be giving it away. I don't know yet what I'm going to do. I need a little bit of time to think about it. But I can't send it to you until the game launches. So probably what's going to happen, I'll figure it out. I'll do a video or something to figure out you know, what to do. I'll talk with the guys here, figure out what we'll do to give it away. And I plan on shipping it out to you the following Saturday, which is next coming, not this one this week, but the next Saturday. So it could get to you on Tuesday. That's my plan. I want to make sure it gets to you on launch. Um, if I have to, I'll overnight it Monday. Um, you know, I, that's the night I go to work. So I might not get back in time to be able to get it. So I'll probably send it on Saturday to make sure. But anyway, Keep that in your mind. For you Xbox One guys, you will have the opportunity to get the game free of charge. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started again. Um, we apologize even right there for me being a little long, but let's all keep it mindful with responses and questions. We have 40 minutes. I think we have enough time if we take care of business. So here we go. Here's the order. Looks like we're going to bring in 404 first. After that, it is 407. 337, then 440, 205, and 330. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. 404, we're bringing you in live now. Smitty, we'll give you your reply. What's going on, man? How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm chilling, man. How you guys doing? We good, man. Good. What's up, man? I, yeah, I called in a few weeks ago. Uh, I think we guys had Damon Grow on, so I was just seeing you guys up again. It was good to hear on um, Rex talk about the game and whatnot. Um, I've been seeing the videos, and I tell you, everything, things look good. I think the main thing was uh, 
wide receiver DV interactions. I think that's that's going to be something that people are going to be talking about this year, as we all know. Um, uh, you know, once again, it's just that um, this wish. I think everybody wishes that there could be more than one big thing per year. I mean, there could be more revolutionary type aspects of the game that are kind of like consolidated instead of having to wait for the next thing. Because, I mean, I think we still got commentary to work on. You know, I think that's uh, still a big thing. Um, we got the, you know, animations and things like that, we know. But I, I think I think everybody, if there was something to say or if there was a question to ask Rex, it would be like, what is the, you know, if this is the foundation, what is the role plan? Because sure enough, you guys have been down there, so I would imagine they have a whiteboard with, yearly plans as to how they're going to implement these things and uh, you know i think i think if, if there would have been competition like we see what's happening with 2k and NBA live right now there where there wouldn't be time to wait you know you couldn't you couldn't wait till next year to have something on the drawing board to implement because your competitor is going to do it and you're going to have to do it you know and so i think i think that would be something that would be interesting like what what features would you have implemented that if you had an, a, a competitor would you have made done things different would you have rushed those features along and, ma and brought them into the game now because you couldn't you didn't have a choice to wait the next year and the year after that but um i think that's something to consider something to think about i know you guys have thought about this a lot but it's just interesting seeing what we have this year and then looking at how NBA live and 2K are going at it. And it's, and it's really good to see that competition. But uh, aside from that, that's all I got. So thanks. Thanks for having me. Yep. No, no problem, man. And uh, to your point, would it have made EA do things faster? No. I think, I think if anything, it would have been, it, it may have been cleaner, but it wouldn't have made them go faster because look at what happened with live. You had to, I was like, now what they had to, what they did was they, they changed up the team. You see what I'm saying? They brought back core team members. Madden brought in Rex and Clint and, you know, some of these other guys. And they had to work with the hand they were dealt. Remember, these guys, that Live 16 is built, the foundation of that is NBA Elite 11, which was made a laughing stock of. That's the core of it. And remember, Madden, Madden that you're going to see and see get played and everything that people are giving kudos on is based off of the currently, you know, right now, it's on that same engine that we all, we all screamed out years in the past. They need a new engine. They need a new engine. They got to switch all these things up. So just bear in mind, live had to build up because 14 was laughed at, 15 was laughed at to an extent despite the progress. And now look what's going on with 16. See what I'm saying? Now they don't look much like a laughing stock now. It's the same deal with Madden. You got to start somewhere and you got to build up. So even in the face of competition, I don't think it would have made Madden go any faster. I think it would have, if anything, they would have been able to sharpen. And that pretty much is what I believe would have happened in that case. But thanks for the call. Hello? Hey, guys, what's up? Can you hey, hear me? what's going on? What's up, man? Yeah, I hear you. All right, cool. Um, sim, but, okay. <laughs> What's up? Oh, man. Um, well, I'll keep it quick for you guys. You know, I know you guys got stuff um, or got guys waiting in queue and whatnot. But as far as Madden, I just got two things, really. The first is you guys keep on leaving these mismatched wide receivers like Julio Jones, Brandon Marshall, Demarius Thomas, Dez. Keep leaving them one on one downfield if you want to. What they got to understand is when to use the mechanic to have your DB play the technique that we used to call basically playing through the receiver and to the football, which is basically a glorified way of saying 
try to get away with pass interference and not the football out. The, right. the Seahawks, they, they do this the best in the league. They get away with more hand contact downfield and the ball's in the air than anyone in the NFL. And it's not an accident. It's taught. And there's a way that you can do it and, you know, reduce the risk of being flagged. People need to learn that you're not going to be able to sky over these guys at ball hawk anymore at will. It's, it's not going to happen. And if you want to keep on doing it, feel free to take losses. That's on you. Um, you know, is everything going to be perfect? No. Um, Azur mentioned the passing mechanics. And Lob Mob did, too, over Twitter. And I can't disagree. Um, I think the passing mechanics are closer to what NCAA 14 was doing, which was pretty good. But I still think APF has the best ma- passing mechanics that, that we've ever seen. I think that the maximum passing of APF is still superior as far as its you know functionality and the way it's implemented. Um, as far as NBA Live goes, it's good to see. Um, the game has to be taken seriously now. I think there's no doubt that that game is not going to go away. I think that I was pretty much the only one who did NBA Live 14 videos. And you know, at the time, I basically said, you know, you control the game if you want to. And I understand if you are. The game looks hideous. But there's stuff here. There's really some good basketball stuff here outside of the ugliness. And, you know, two years later, we're starting to see that stuff that was there in 14 become clearer as the window dressing around the game and the meat around the game gets, you know, more substantial. So I think that it's going to be a treat for basketball fans. And I do agree with virtual footballer to an extent that um, 2K could have some problems on their hands. They could have killed NBA live forever and for all time after NBA elite. But after NBA 2K11, five-on-five gameplay began to stagnate and became more of a um, my player and my team you know, type of game. And that left the door open for this to happen. And it, 2K might you know, regret that. So that's all I got to say. Um, Rex and Clint Odenberg, they do a great job. EA cannot let those guys exit the door under any circumstances. You guys have done a good job with the community. And, you know, hats off to all y'all, and talk to y'all later. Peace. Appreciate the call, Nikias, and Nikias. I always love when you call me. You're an honorary member of the Sim Standard, and your viewpoint, just like 757, we call you one of the triplets. It's you 757 <laughs> Neff. <laughs> so, you know, we got two of the three, so hopefully Neff calls in two of the three. But just to your point and what you said, now, I'm going to be watching the passing game very closely this year because with that being the new, you know, the passing mechanics and the wide receiver DB interactions, I want to see how the public takes to it because to me, it always amounts to what happens when people find cheese and exploit and what the patch does to the game. Um, Because to me, I felt very good about the inaccurate passes before the patch and not so much afterwards. So uh, to your point, I'm going to be watching that very closely this year, and a lot of feedback will be coming from me on my channel um, about Madden. Um, and I think what you said about all pro football 2K is still correct, um, even if it is an illusion of the passing game being a lot tighter. I think it's you know that illusion is still there. Um, there's some stuff probably mechanically. Um, Madden has to clean up, but I, I think the wide receiver DB interaction that people are going to see uh, surpass what we've seen in all pro football 2K8. Uh, to your point about live, you hit it right on the head. 2K left the door open, and that's what happens when you get complacent and you sit on your horse and say, you know, I'm 2K. I don't have to show gameplay. I don't have to, you know, listen to the community. We're going to do what we want with this game, and now it's coming back to bite you. And live is there. <laughs> they stand standing strong. they even coming out before you, which is wow. Like, you let an underdog come out before you and, and let people get their hands on it, and you confirm for another year. So I'm interested to see how 2K responds. I'm, like I said earlier, I know uh, Czar and OG are itching to put out gameplay. And I hope, you know, hopefully they 
they get off this old media and hype train stuff that they're doing with Ronnie and LD2K with my team and be the story and Spike Lee and get back to what made them great in 2K11. Um, so appreciate the call as always, and we'll roll on to the next one. So it's a great call. Yep, definitely appreciate the call, man. Let's go on to the next one. Knock these out. Three three seven. We got you in, and you know I'll be providing your reply. What's going on? Three three seven. What you got for us tonight, man? Hey, how's it going, y'all? Man, it's been a while since I called in, but I've been watching the queue lately. But, anyways, uh, I just want to say uh, I was watching this movie called uh, Get On Up, a story by James Brown, and he said, "You doubt God's ears? I'm gonna tell everybody, do you doubt God's eyes? God gave you eyes to see. Can can you see it?" Do you see what happened? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just saying that it's like people like iPod King Carter, you know, Chris Smooth, you know, all these guys are like 2K, I'm going to say fanboys, but they, 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 they were supporters of 2K, and they're even saying that NBA Live is doing the dang business. So I just, I, I mean, I'm not saying it because I haven't played the game, but some people played the game a little bit. I'm, you know, they, they had good things to say about it. It's all unraveling. And I, I just always thought that 2K, you know, they just left the same gameplay from last gen and just up the graphics, then and and probably did some controller configuration and really didn't. I mean, they did minor fixes, but not enough to say this is a totally different game. And people say Madden is the same game. Well, 2K has been the same since I think 2K11. So uh, I just I just I just hope that people see what's happening. And and it may be a change that Barack Obama was talking about, and that's all I gotta say say right now. But uh, Sam, uh, <laughs> yeah, where, where do you want me? To, where, where do you want me to hit you up at about that? Uh, the the that that that, that Madden and that uh and the uh, the thing you do for the donators. Yeah, man. If you want to, you can definitely feel free. If you want to send me, you know, like a longer message, you can shoot me an email. It's uh at Sam F Ball. Well, Sam F Ball Critic at Gmail dot com. So okay, yeah, okay. and. And yeah, all I want to do, man, is just make sure. I, I mean, I know all of you guys, but I just want to make sure um, you guys let me know what you want. You know, as far as the game, if you win the drawing, and you know, definitely that other piece to it, like where you know, if you want to be able to come on the show, we give you a segment, or if you want me to promote you on YouTube or whatever. That's just all right. I need to know. So yeah, okay. just go ahead and send me an email, man. I, you know, we definitely we'll talk. All right, all right, I'll, I'll hit you up. All right, that's all I got to say. All right, man. Well, thanks, 337, man. And, um, you know, I, I thank you for all of your support, man, for over the years. And, you know, like you said, you, you know, did with your hard-earned money, you donated, you know, to the cause. I appreciate all of you guys that did that. And I definitely want to give back in whatever way that I can, man, because, you know, I'm just that type of guy. So, yeah, live, you know, you made a great point. You know, I'll throw another name in the mix, QJB. You know, that man Q, you know, we all seen Q. Rise to the top. We knew Q when he was just, you know, that guy. Remember AZ? He did that that nice chopped up montage with the football. We was like, yo, this dude editing skills is bananas. And who would have yeah. thought that he would become the guy that he is now? Like almost 500,000 subscribers. And he built himself basically off 2K. And even he's saying, yo, live is coming. You know, all of us talked about it. Me, him, Air Jones, you know, Zora, all of us who've actually been able to see the game. It's coming. You know, it, you know, it's definitely up for debate now as far as will they be a competitor. You know, overall, you know, of course, they might still be behind. But listen, man, live might be the game a lot of people is playing versus 2K. Cause, so I'm, I'm very excited. I'm waiting to see what 2K is bringing with the gameplay. Because let's not lose this. If they fix legacy issues, and allow their interrupt, you know, interruptible animations and stuff like that. 2K will be out of this, out of this world. Let's not yeah. let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> and so, thing, to be honest, 2K is my preferred choice in basketball. But I can recognize what live is doing, where it's going, and how it's come up. <clears throat> but I I don't play 2K blindly, and I don't think anybody on the show does as well because mm -hmm. we have people out there who do play it blindly. Like, it doesn't have issues, and it's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. But, like I told you, that girl <laughs> got the mug in the feet. So, you know, they, they get them toes worked on, they're they, they going to be a 10. 
Absolutely. So let's go ahead and move on to the next call. Our, our buddy 205, Smitty will offer your reply. What's going on, Cowboys? What you doing today, man? Pretty good waiting for my Cowboys to play, man. It's preseason going. Um, Azor, man, I, I got to get my PS4 again so I can get you on that man. But, you know, I got you on Twitter. Though. The Titans will be ready for all. Uh, but um, I was uh happy to hear Rex actually give a reply to what I was asking, and uh, I think he um pretty much has a great idea of where he's going with the game and with ratings, and uh, I think uh within the next couple of years we'll probably see a big difference in ratings. I think we'll see an ability system. Um, I think we'll see some separation from players, and I'm hoping that we get to the point to where they're actually able to work on big pieces of the game. And what I mean by that is like, cause I heard in one interview, I think it was hip hop gamer. I believe it was where he talked about actually taking a whole year to work on special teams. And I would like to see that actually work on a whole like former special teams, like not just the kicking with the wind and everything, but like setting up blocks, um, actually seeing extra push on the line when you're going for field goals and extra points because I don't really feel that and, you know, kind of stop the cheese with people cheating to get to the ball and blocking it where it's actually a realistic block you can actually pull off in the game and actually see, like, people do not, like, gimmicky plays, but you know how they will set up like how LSU did, you know, like some teams will do that, like the Patriots or the Steelers. They actually have, like, place where they're like if they need uh, like a two-point conversion or something like that they can actually put those in the game and make it realistic and you know they have percentages to go by you know and it does you know it doesn't just work you know you, you have to be able to set it up with a chess match and you know that's what I would like to see in the game I would like to see them bring playbooks back where you can actually if you're really good at making a playbook you can do that like you could back in the old pack teams and actually make up plays and stuff like that and um, that's just how I feel uh, y'all have a great night uh, enjoy y'all show that's all I got all right well like always you know we appreciate you 205 calling and um I'll say this at least when it comes to other games in EA's library like um FIFA, that would be a nice thing to do as far as special teams, because I was just thinking about that now, like listening to you as far as setting up your blocks, like setting up your blocking scheme is just like how you can choose what kind of defensive scheme you want to do, as well as assigning what kind of tactic you want your players to do, like each individual. And you can do things like that in FIFA, and that would be nice to have that kind of mechanical function in uh, Madden, you know, for something like that on the special team side. But, excuse me, but I mean, as we see, as we're seeing right here, it's clear. Like, and this goes back to what we said years ago. They're, they're gonna, it's gonna take them time to get the game there. And the main thing is because these guys are playing from behind, it's gonna give the appearance as if, well, you know, like the other caller said. Um, it's going to give that appearance as if, you know, they're not moving fast enough or if 2K was there, things would be accelerated. And that's not necessarily true at all because realistically, Madden is moving at the same speed everyone else is. It's moving at the same speed. It's just because their product's behind, it makes it, you know, it, it's going to appear that way. So... That's why hearing Rex say what he said, you know, as far as big things being addressed in the game, like these guys have a foundation, but it's not all the way there yet. As as it was said at E3, it's not all the way there yet as far as the core. They feel next year they'll have the core, and then they'll really be able to build up upon that. And the one other thing I want to say before we move forward here, from what was said from the other caller that I had addressed, um... Listen to the commentary. Listen to the commentary. Listen yeah, to the presentation yeah. in the game. Please listen to the commentary because you're not hearing any of that stuff right now. So please listen to how that commentary unfolds 
in games. You know, when, when you when you hear it, and this is what I'm saying, have that chance to really soak in the experience of the game. You may not be able to fully get that when you see people live stream it per se, but at least you know, red box it, game fly it, rent it, whatever. If you feel worried about purchasing, purchase it. You know, if, if you purchase or whatever, play the game. Soak the game in for everything it gives you. And then you can make a conscious decision as far as what they did. Because they did a lot in this year's title. It's just that the Wide Out DV interactions are getting a lot of the the bulk of the attention. But they did a lot in this year's game. So I just wanted to state that. But uh, I'll go ahead and um, pass it back to you, Sim. Yeah, man, we'll go ahead and move on. And like Smitty said, listen to the commentary. It, it's a, it seems like it's what it should have been in Madden 25. More player names, you know, drive-specific commentary, drive starters, all that stuff. Make sure you listen to it. It's a lot better than what we've seen. But we got a time check, guys. We're at 18 minutes and 39 seconds with three callers. So you guys know the deal. Let's keep it short and sweet so we get everybody in. Right now, I'm going to grab 623, and Effect will offer your reply. 623, we got you in live, man. How you doing tonight? Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Good. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Hey, ain't nothing much, man. I just want to uh, comment on uh, 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 your boy Rex, man. Uh, I seen him on that uh, uh, HHP uh, interview, man. He didn't take that belt, man. I give him mad respect for that, man. Because, you know, a few years ago, man, they had to grab that belt and threw it on, man, you know. And, <laughs> and uh you know, kept it moving. But that, you know, that shows you right there that, you know, they serious about improving the improving math, you know. So I appreciate, you know, him doing that and, and, and recognizing, you know, where the game is and where it needs to go. And and, you know, I I I like two K, you know, I, I like what they did with their football. And um what I wanna say is that, you know, to me Madden has improved every year. You know what I'm saying? I got friends that, you know, you know, talk bad about it, talk bad about it. And I, and I always tell them, you know, it's better than it was last year. And I'm not going to compare it to 2K. I'm going to compare what they're doing from year to year. Right. And, and every year since, I, I believe, in my opinion, Madden 10 was that foundation that they could have continued to build on. Because they had the gang tackling in it. They had the free runner and the uh, free runner as far as uh, uh, foot planting was pretty good in that. So I take that as what possibly could have been the uh, 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 foundation, you know, moving on on that. Because the nine and everything, when they were uh, uh, motion capture and referees and stuff like that, to me, those throwaway games, because motion capture and referees, uh, <laughs> I don't know why they did that, but uh, yeah, man, I, I just appreciate you know, far as developers are mad, you know, them stepping up to the plate, man, and recognizing, you know, where the game is, and not you know, taking on more than they can chew at this time. Just you know, working on things that we asking for, because like I called in before, you know, and was talking about you know, just little things that they can improve on right away instead of these big chunks that, you know, realistically, they're not going to be able to do in a year of time. So there's a little things like the uh, extra cleat on the shoes and as far as the kicker having a different different shoe on kicking the bar and stuff like that, just add to the immersion of the game it, it, is what I'm saying. But, you know, all in all, you know, from year to year, it has been improving. And this is big, man. This is big. This uh, wide receiver TV interaction is, is huge. So that's all I'm going to speak on on that, man. Appreciate y'all, man. <clears throat> Appreciate the call, man. And, hey, don't be talking with sense, man. You know that's not appreciated on the internet. <laughs> but Rex, he pretty much laid it out. And, and like you said, man, he didn't take the belt because these developers, like we've been telling y'all, they feel like it's not there yet. There's still work to be done. It can be improved. Like you said, it has been improving year to year. If you don't think so, go back and play Madden 25. 
I I dare you go back and play Man 25 without the new passing mechanics stuff that's been introduced. And people see that as a bad thing of all. Oh, it's not it'll be the show. They're not innovating all this kind of stuff. Go back and play the other games. You know. If it's not improving, go back and, and see if you get a better product going back to the you know previous years. And talk, and so as far as what you said with Madden 10, they could have continued with that, but just look at it like this. If they had to continue with that, they wouldn't be where they are with organic gameplay now and where they are now. Because physics, at that time, we were talking about physics. And we wanted physics in a football game. We had we felt it had to be there. It had to be respected. Weight, momentum, strength, all that stuff had to matter in a football game. <clears throat> and if, so if they didn't do it then, then they would have had to do it now. We wouldn't have wanted to wait for that. But if you, you know, people think old men were better, go back to Madden uh, 9, 10, 11, where people were not being able to add on to a tackle. You have somebody coming in and only one person can tackle. Tumbleweed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff. Or go back to, you know, when you could actually really rock your catch and it wouldn't be any <laughs> top of it. Like now you can play DB, you can play good defense and play the ball. Or go back to Madden where you couldn't uh, assign global defensive forma- uh, hot routes. Now you can stop that streak from going down the sideline by adding bracket coverage. So if Madden's not improving, then what are we doing? So good call, man. And appreciate it if you all, you know, call back. We appreciate the support, and we'll keep it moving. Absolutely, man. And another quick time check. We had 13 minutes with two callers. Uh, let's make it quick, and that goes for both of us. Um, and one, one real, I'll say this real quick. It's little tiny stuff that you'll notice in this game. One in particular, this is very minute, but I've heard complaints about it. The way the quarterback throws the ball, like the ball is actually being thrown. I want y'all to pay attention. I'm looking at an example of it right now. The ball does not jump out of the hand. I'm actually seeing Ben Roethlisberger's index finger of Ben when the ball is released. Like it's, it's very clean. And the play action and stuff like that. Look at the little stuff like that, man. Those little intricate details that they're starting to try to adjust. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it, man. 267, we're going to bring you in. I'll give you your reply. Then after that, 219. So without further ado, 267, we got you in, man. How you doing? All right, man. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? Listen, man. I called in last week, man. Some you wasn't there, man. But, uh. Getting back to that NBA Live, man. 2K done got a fire lit up under him, man. Like, I fought in last week. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a hard working man. I want to come home and play with my guys. We get on, we ball. So I'm a legend 2 and 2K. And once again, I was saying that 2K need to fix what they needed to fix in their game. The cheeses, basically. This is all addressed to the Demi guys and all y'all guys once again. Get on NBA Live and show where your real skills at. That's all I'm going to say. My thing is, you cannot buy your player now, okay? There is no way for you to cheat in the game as far as what we know right now, okay? And in NBA Live, you have never really had those, you know, those those problems with the game um, as far as what you would have with, with 2K. But like I said, man, the, the, the red carpet is rolled out, man, and I didn't expect this at all. Like I said, I called last week. I'm expecting, you know, to see something from 2K this week. I ain't seen nothing as far as anything yet. They keep showing Steph Curry trailer, and then they just came out with James Harden trailer. I'm like, look, where's the gameplay at? You understand what I'm saying? But I'm not going to put 2K on the back burner because I know 2K is holding the torch right now. But you know what? It's looking kind of dim. It's looking kind of dim over there on that side, man. If, 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 if live come out and they deliver, Listen, man, it's, it, it, basketball season is hot. Like I said, I mean, I play football, but I'm more so on the basketball side, man. 2K, listen, man, <laughs> y'all know what y'all in for. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I love the competition, man. Y'all guys keep doing what y'all doing, man. I appreciate the, the, the work in the community. Rex, that's big ups to you, bro. Um, getting the game where it needs to be. Like I said, man, I, I, I'm, I'm just looking for the progress to keep going forward. Thanks, man. Thanks for the time. Absolutely, man. Thanks for the call, man. It, 
it, it always cracks me up, man, when you, you know, I like when you hear different people talk from different regions. You can always tell them Philly boys, man, like they got that same, that same sound, man. So shout outs to Philly, man, not too far from me. But yeah, you, you right, bro. You right. And, it's, and see, what I like about your comment is you said exactly what we always say. You know, ain't nobody counting out 2K. We know who the king is, you know, so to speak. But, yo, you know, <laughs> you got somebody else that's knocking on the door. You know what I mean? So it, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I can't wait to see what these two games offer because at the end of the day, we got options. And like my man said there, you know, I'm one of those guys that like to grind. I don't like buying and all of that. You know what I mean? Like, I want to earn something. Like, And also, like he said, if I want to come home and hop on with AZ and Smitty and a couple of you guys, I want to be able to just do that real quick. Let me get some time in while my little man is asleep or whatever. And live seems to be offering that. So I can't wait, man. 2K, come on. OG. OG, I'm talking to you. Za, come on, man. Show us something. Show us something. I know y'all got something tough. So that's that's what's up. All right, man. 219, we're going to bring you in. Smitty will offer the reply. Thanks for calling, man. How you doing tonight? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for uh, taking a call again. Uh, real quick, two things. I assume I just saw your uh, video on the uh, uh, Bryant versus uh, Tillman. That, that was pretty good. Look, uh, the thing is, is uh, I think actually this year with the wide receiver uh, uh, DB interaction, uh, Last year they took a big step up with actually making defense, you know, better with AI. But again, with without the interactions and you know things that are close to human interactions weren't there, where it just still made the game kind of you know arcadeish in a way, even though it was a step in the right direction. It was an improvement. However, I think this year it feels like maybe really defense is going to matter as well as offense because you're going to have the new catching animations and you know you're you're not going to be able to uh, just I. I, I I really don't think there's going to be that many texts. I hope I'm wrong. You know, like I said, I, I would hope there's no, you know, exploits. But I think it's really going to, you know, with the interactions being more realistic, you have to play it right. You have to call the right plays. You have to, uh, you know, make the right decisions. And, you know, and, and you know, it's on you if you uh, make or break the play. Uh, so I think really this year, defense and offense are going to actually matter, matter where you're going to, you know, you, you're going to come down to, like I said, I could just put that guy in the slot and run the slant. With your with your quick uh, quick uh, receiver, so you're gonna actually have to you know call the right play. I, I feel that way. Uh, real quick on 2K, um, you know they're you know they're probably watching a lot of live stuff. I, I'm just hoping that by the time they actually you know start talking or showing gameplay and getting more into it, besides you know the, the nonsense they're really showing now, uh, it better be a whopper. Uh, I'm, you know, are they ready to blow us away with something? Are they holding something? Are they doing this on purpose? That's my hope. I went on a website at one time real quick, and they said something about offering more smoother gameplay and this and that, which we definitely know it needs, especially when it comes down to post play. When you have a mismatch with you know a big center posting up maybe a guard who's you know who's you know way shorter than you, you shouldn't really have to struggle, especially when you have the weight and the height to you know to really post and you know do a quick score and you know the, the herky jerky kind of movement to pull the move off real quick and you know be able to finish by the basket like you you know you really see in the NBA. If they could fix that, you know, and not getting frozen animations, you know, if that's what they mean by smoother gameplay, I, I you know, I, I really hope that's what that means and where, you know, weight and momentum is also going to, you know, be a factor in and, uh, you know, the movement's going to be more human-like. You know, like I said, they just got to blow us away somehow, and I hope they know something that, and they're ready to just, you know, give it all to us and say, hey, all right, now check this out. You know, this is, you know, this is fixed, that fixed. If they're waiting this long, they got to say they're going to have to say something. Eventually, they have to break because they can't they can't hold it you know too much longer. They got a couple months, but they got to show us something. You know, they know we're we're, we're waiting. So, yeah, I, I can only hope that's that's what they uh, mean and that's what they're taking so long. But uh, those are the fixes that definitely need to be in that game, like we always you know been saying. But uh, that's what that's what I would like to see the most. So uh, that's pretty much all I got to say. All right. Well, thanks for the call. And I'll just be real brief. Basically, it's just wait and see because we don't know. We don't know from a raw, straight up raw gameplay to the current extent what's going on with live in all aspects or what's going on with 2K. And even with the whole pro ambit, you see how what EA put out as far as everything is XP and SP. 
we haven't seen what 2K did yet. See what I'm saying? They have VC you can get in advance, but we haven't heard them say yet as far as how that applies to the players. They can still come out and say, oh, by the way, you don't, you can't VC your player up in this mode. Like they may, they may say that. So we don't know. But uh, as far as Madden is concerned, it, it, see, it's all just a wait and see kind of deal. Wait and like play when you, once you play the game and you see, you're going to see that balance. Because I know people, even from the videos Sim put out and these other vids out here right now so far, people are still worrying about high point catches being OP. It's not OP. It is not OP. Y'all are just seeing highlights. Whenever you see highlights, you think everything's OP. No. See what happens during regular games when you throw downfield. As it was shown in E3 footage, guys threw it downfield on regular and they were throwing picks, dropping passes, getting breakups, etc. So it's not OP. It is not OP. So you know what? And like I say, you guys will see. Yeah. Let me let me say something on that real quick before the show is over. Smitty made a great point. It was highlights that that first video I dropped. Let me explain that as well, guys. Again, I was able to go to a capture event. You know, there's certain things that I did. You know, because it's a capture event. I have gameplays coming. But I encourage you to be ready for when I'm ready to stream and these guys as well. Then that's when we're going to really look at this gameplay. So, you know, come on. You know, some of the stuff I'm showing, I'm trying to highlight certain things that I know we would like. The spice stuff that we want to see. It is highlights. Like that trailer I did, the first one. That y'all didn't see how many times it took me to get some of those interactions. Like one guy was complaining about Reavers getting beat. Dude, first and foremost, in real football, every corner gets beat. I recall Rebus getting beat by Brandy Moss down the middle and he lays out with the one hand catch. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. It happens. But He's if like you could have seen, yeah, if you could see the amount of times it took me with some of those interactions, especially the Pat Pete ones, it took me like six tries to get something worthy of showing. So, you know, don't get twisted by just seeing that. And again, it's not perfect. You know, the two things that, I definitely want to see going forward, and Rex will agree, like he said on Game Changers Radio, the warping and the shifting. You don't really see a lot of it, but you might see sometimes with the two-man interactions where you're going to see them kind of shift into play slightly because, again, you got to remember, it's an animation. And that's something that no company has been able to to overcome yet. I mean, y'all saw it in my, my Pez video, and we'll get to that next week, but... It's just showing you certain things are just video game stuff that hasn't been overcome yet, but they're trying to knock that stuff out. When that man said that they want poetry and motion, that's full volumes to me. But outside of that, you're going to see, if you take it for what it is, man, you're going to see some beautiful plays. Like, I got a play coming for y'all where the, <laughs> I ain't even going to tell you. You're going to see some beautiful game play and plays in this game. And as well as you're going to see, dang, man, I want to get this next time, though. Ooh, I wish the way the game goes, man. All of these games are going to have that stuff. But be excited as a sim player to see that this stuff is here. And, yes, defense is going to matter because if you keep on leaving certain people wide open, one-on-one, like that Martavis Brunt, like, you know, real quick, uh, shout-outs to my man Panther Beast. He was like, hey, man. Tillman is better than that. And I was like, okay, I feel you, but he gets burnt too. <laughs> Montavis Bryant is 6'4 and runs a 4'3. So I high pointed the pass. As you, I tried to highlight in the video, he went up and took it. Just, just be ready, man. So I, I don't even mean to take all the time now. I'm just getting happy for us sim guys that we're getting what we're wanting. And it's going to continue. So 35 seconds left, man. You guys got anything before we roll up? Yeah, I just got one thing to say. People, please start watching football. Please stop making points like every DB is indestructible and he just does not, he just does not, you know, drop any picks or get beat ever. It happens, okay? Just get 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 accustomed to that. It's gonna happen. I'll just say that. Hi guys. Seven seconds left. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel. We'll have stuff coming and uh, 
Just get ready for football, man. All right. Peace. And it is real football. Always. Right. <laughs> All right, fellas. Once again, guys, thanks for coming by. And if you want to interact with me live, head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Fat. The call-in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys. Until next time, lights out.